good day and welcome to the pilot episode of Technology Enhanced Learning, the show that features brief summaries about research and innovation in the area of computer-based education. I am your host today, Didith Rodrigo, from the Ateneo de Manila University in the Philippines. Today's guest is Dr. Tanya Mitrovic. Tanya is a professor of computer science and software engineering at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. She is a distinguished member of the Association of Computing Machinery and a senior member of many other international organizations, including IEEE, AAAI, and the Artificial Intelligence and Education Society. Tanya was the president of the Asia-Pacific Society for Computers and Education from 2020 to 2021. Welcome, Tanya, and thank you for agreeing to be the first guest of Technology Enhanced Learning. Tanya, you have a long history of research in the field of computers and education, but for today, we're here to talk about your latest work on active video watching. Could you start off by telling us what active video watching is and how it is different from just video watching in general? Well, learning by watching videos is not new. It has relatively long history, more than 20 years, but it has really picked up since e-learning and MOOCs became very popular and especially uh, video watching platforms such as YouTube. Now, video is a very good medium for learning because it's uh, multimedia. So we have text, we have audio, we have still or moving images, very useful, especially for tasks which are, which requires seeing someone performing a particular task, right? And video is also very cost effective. So you make video once and you can watch it lots of times. However, there are problems. As we know, video-based learning can become a passive activity because there is no interaction typically with videos. There is no interaction with other people. There is no feedback. So for some students, especially in formal learning, they can just watch videos and completely be passive. Now, research shows that to be able to learn from videos, uh, students need to be engaged deeply with the learning material. And that's the problem with VPL. So active video watching has become a, an active research topic. Um, I have personally worked on this since 20, 2015 and in collaboration with Professor Vanya Dimitrova from the University of Leeds in the UK, we developed a video-based learning platform that we call AVW Space. So basically the idea is to support the students to be deeply engaged with the learning material. So to turn passive learning into something that's active and will result in better learning outcomes. Okay, you say that the, the, the platform that you have supports uh, students as they watch video. Um, how exactly does it support their video watching? How does it help them uh, go from being passive uh, viewers to, to active viewers? Yeah, uh, of course, we are not the only people who are working on this. So there are other um, video watching platforms that support learning by, for example, not taking. And that's what we are doing in AVW space as well. So the student can watch a video, they can stop it, and they can write a comment on something that they have observed. Uh, in addition to that, we um, provide different kinds of support. And over the years, we had lots of different versions of AVW space. In the initial version, we asked the student once when they write a comment to specify an aspect, they basically to tag the comment to describe what the comment is about. And the tags that we defined um, are kind of written in a way to um, make students reflect on their past experience or to think about why something is important in the video or to plan their future performance. Most of the studies we have performed with AVW Space are about teaching soft skills. Um, of course, the platform is general purpose, so it can be used for other types of tasks. But we wanted to look at soft skills because they are notoriously difficult to teach. So, for example, um, 
as uh, reflection prompts when writing comments, we have things like, I have not seen this before, or something like another tag would be, I'm very good at this. So basically kind of trying to make the student think about the experience. And that's very important for learning soft skills. Now, in later versions of the platform, we added additional types of supports, but that was what we have done in the very first one. I was reading some of your work in this area, and, and quite a lot of it has to do with nudges, using nudges to promote learning. Uh, could you tell us more about these nudges and whether they were useful? Did, did students actually take these cues? So um, nudges basically come from behavioral economics. There was uh, a famous book written by Richard, Richard Taylor and Cass Sunstein uh, called the uh, Nudge Theory. So basically nudges are um, ways of leading people to make good decisions. And in the book, they talk about different kinds of situations. So basically it could be how you structure a particular environment. It could be a physical environment or a computer-based environment. How you structure that environment so that the environment itself leads people to making better decisions. So nudges in our case uh, are of two kinds. We have added interactive visualizations to AVW space, and they basically uh, serve as signposts. So we tell the students that something is important. So for example, on the video timeline, we show when other students made comments and the student can then see that there are lots of comments in one particular part of the video and make a decision that maybe I should watch that. There's something important in this part of the video. The other type of nudges we added are personalized prompts. So the environment observes the student while they're watching videos, writing comments, and then decides when it is a good time to give the student a nudge. Now, over the years, we have added more and more nudges. The initial ones were Fairly simple. So, for example, if the student watched more than half of a video and made no comments at all, they would get a prompt which appears on the screen and it says, how about writing a, writing a comment? Um, students who write comments typically learn more. So we tell them that there is a positive, possible positive outcome of that action. Now, in later versions of the platform, matches became more sophisticated, so we were giving nudges to students. Um, for example, if a student always writes comments with the same tag, with the same aspect, uh, one of the aspects is, I like this, right? Um, that's uh, a tag platforms. However, from the point of learning, it doesn't say much. So the student likes something, but they maybe write a very short comment and it's not clear why they li uh, like something. So we then give them a nudge and say, how about using this other aspect? And we give them an example of a comment, of a good comment written by another student collected from previous classes. So we are kind of telling them their other points of view. We are giving them, giving them examples to start from. Um, uh, in the latest version of the platform, that was work done by my student, Negar Mohammed Hassan, who actually submitted her PhD thesis today. So she has developed machine learning classifiers, which can analyze the comment as the student writes it. So immediately after the student submits a comment, it will be classified as a relatively low quality comment, which doesn't have enough information, or maybe as a high quality comment, which shows reflection, um, and other, you know, reflecting on the past experience or planning for the future. So we show the student a notch which corresponds to the category of, uh, quality category of the comment. Um, you also asked whether nudges are useful. So we have performed so far 13 studies, most of them are about teaching presentation skills, but we also perform studies in other domains. What we have seen uh, is that as we were improving the platform, learning improved as well. So in the very first 
couple of studies, we have seen that students who write comments learn much more than students who are completely passive. In the initial studies, the percentage of students who were passive was high. It was about 60%. I'm talking about uh, first-year engineering students, so relatively young students. In the latest study, the percentage of um, passive students dropped down to 25%. So now we have three quarters of students writing comments, and some of them, most of them write really good comments. We have also seen very high positive correlation between the number of uh, high quality comments and how much they learn. So that's basically in a nutshell, we are seeing many more students engaging in active learning and thinking about the learning material presented in the video. This new project that uh, you have begun makes use of AVW to help ICT professionals in New Zealand gain soft skills. Um, you mentioned this earlier. Uh, can you tell us something about the scope of the project and how you envision these, this is a strategy of using nudges uh, to help achieve this goal of, um, of training these professionals in soft skills? Well, so far, the studies we have performed were all with university students. Some of them were with high school students, but basically different levels of the education system. The grant that you mentioned, um, we just got recently, and we're very excited about that. So um, New Zealand government gave us a grant to look at whether we can use this approach, active video watching approach, in software industry. Now, uh, many of you know that uh, in software development, soft skills play a bigger role than technical skills because software is typically developed in teams and team collaboration, communication, negotiation, and all these other soft skills are crucial. Uh, there is a huge demand for good software developers, and of course, we cannot produce enough of them. So we are now looking at whether we can uh, use the approach that we developed in real industry with software teams, and we are collaborating with several companies here in Christchurch, New Zealand, um, hoping that we will be able to develop we have several goals. Uh, so we, it, one of the goals is to identify what are the crucial soft skills for software industry. Another one is how can we assess soft skills? So developing a framework for assessing soft skills independently of watching videos. And finally, how can we use active video watching to actually improve soft skills and hopefully improve quality of software that's produced and productivity? Okay. If a teacher wanted to make use of your AVW platform, how would they go about doing so? Um, would they write your research team for an account? Or is there an interface that makes this, uh, this platform public? Uh, at the moment, uh, the system is uh, free to use, but you would need to write to us to give you an account. Um, what we are currently doing at my university is we are integrating AVW space with Moodle so that it would be easier for lecturers to define new learning spaces and easier for students to watch videos. And hopefully one day we will, be, we will have a system which is completely free to the, to the whole world. Well, that's, that's something to look forward to, I think. Um, I remember early on, I did try to use AVW space in my class. Um, this was pre-pandemic, so uh, I hope <laughs> that someday I'll be able to use it again. Um, so if a teacher, for, for whatever reason, can't use AVW space, uh, are there lessons you've learned from your research so far that, that we can transfer to our class? There are def definitely lots of lessons. Um, in all the studies we have conducted, we have collected student feedback. And the first, the most frequent thing they say is that it's so nice to have all the videos they need in one place. So they do appreciate the teachers selecting the appropriate videos for them. Um, in the latest version, when we have all these uh, visualizations, different kinds of visualizations, they also appreciated that as well. Um, but for someone who cannot use AVW space, uh, the crucial lesson is that interaction is needed. 
Now, if we cannot have interaction while they're watching videos, that uh, can be supported by the teacher, for example, asking questions after the video or supporting students in reflecting on what they have learned. It could be by using reflective diaries or something like that, but it's crucial that the students do reflect on what they have learned and how it applies to their past experience and how they can use it in the future. So that would be my main message. All right. And maybe to build a little on that and to end the show, I wanted to talk a little about mentorship. Um, you've had years of experience as a mentor and in our organization, APSI, uh, we've placed a high priority on developing the next generation of researchers. So I was wondering if you had any advice to give our young researchers about how to develop and nurture their careers as they move forward. Well, if I'm to select only one thing, I would probably say that they need to keep looking for opportunities. There are lots of opportunities every day. And um, young researchers are sometimes timid and scared of you know, approaching all the researchers. But that's definitely what all the researchers would appreciate very much, you know, being uh, contacted by someone who is looking for ideas, looking for feedback on their ideas. So don't be afraid to contact other members of apps in this case, but also, you know, in general researchers in various countries. Another useful opportunity is going to conferences. Now that's much harder, obviously, <laughs> in the pandemic. But talking to people, getting advice from lots of people is what's very really important. Okay. And I think with that, uh, uh, I'd like to end by saying thank you so much, Tanya, for joining us today. And thank you for being our very first guest on this uh, new show. And best of luck on your new project. And we hope to talk to you again in the future. Yeah, thank you for inviting me.